Hey everybody, what's up? It's RJ here. Uh, I'm doing a quick video today to uh, go over something I think is pretty cool. That I uh, I've heard of this idea before. It's called the measurement problem. Um, but as I found out about it or was reminded about it just um, actually today in a, in a documentary I was watching, um, I thought it would be a good idea to do a video and uh, basically. Uh, to kind of tell you guys uh, what you know what it is if you don't know and also you know maybe get some feedback from people who do know to teach me and teach other people more like kind of what this all really means what we should take away from it and you know how important it is to our lives so let me jump right into what the measurement problem is it has to do with quantum physics so for those of you who don't know quantum physics has to do with the way things work at really small scales like under the size of electrons and protons and atoms like the quarks and stuff like that so uh, anyway, the source, the documentary I watched is called Atom 3, A-T-O-M 3. I'll link it below. It's available on YouTube and it was made by BBC. Um, a lot of different scientists are in it, so you know you can you know, explore the sources that come within that. But it was a brief, brief point about 40, 45 minutes into the movie where they talk about uh, the measurement problem and... It was so fast and they don't really go into it too far because it's kind of a high level movie that I thought it'd be cool to just do a quick video to dig down and just reiterate what they said about the measurement problem. Um, and I didn't really add a lot either, so don't don't feel like it's this deep dive. All right, so this is what it is. The issue of quantum physics, it states that atoms are not actually in a specific place at a given time. If you're not a science person or even if you are um, and you didn't know this, this, this could sound like a mouthful, but I'll kind of say it again, basically, we're finding out that atoms aren't actually in a specific place at a specific time. We think that would be the case. Like, okay, if you could freeze time and look in a given spot, that's where the atom is. Not necessarily, because if you look at it from where you're standing, you might see the atom is in A position. And if I look at it from where I'm standing, we might, I might think it's in A1 or you know B, let's say, a different position next to it, slightly next to it. So what does this mean? Uh, basically, so what's happening is that the, the the measuring of the position of an atom itself, that sounds counterintuitive, is what's locking it into a place. So when you look at something, you're making it reality in a sense. We hear a lot of uh, frou-frou, hocus-pocus kind of whatever, uh, you know, I guess you could say from people, I'm not going to name names, I don't want to disparage anybody, but self-help gurus, positive thinking advocates, the law of attraction... I'm actually a fan of all that kind of stuff, and I think it's funny that science is starting to show us, and I'll do more videos on this, you know, reason to believe that this, um, you know, positive way of thinking or whatever actually uh, has a more profound effect than we think. So back into the measurement problem, um, counterintuitive, the science suggests this is real. So basically when you're trying to measure the position of an atom with our most precise tools, like we're looking into super powerful microscopes or whatever, um, we find that the location of the atom exists more in a field or an array rather than at a specific place. So, I mean, to make a, uh, an analogy, it's like, I'll make two analogies. One for donuts, one for beer pong. <laughs> if you're trying to get a donut from Dunkin' Donuts, you don't say, I want the third cherry donut down from the right or the third pink frosting donut. You say, I'll take a pink frosting, I'll take a butter wheat, whatever. I don't remember the name of donuts, you know, whatever, but, but, butter pecan, whatever. What happens is what the one you get could have to do with the inflection of your voice, when you say it based on where the person is standing that works there, um, what mood they're in, what happened, all that stuff is different. So this is getting kind of crazy already. That's how it is with positioning of, of everything in the universe, atoms and all the building blocks. They're not even in a specific place. It's a, a relative place to our observation. If I still have you guys, uh, I'll add a little bit more. I'll do a sip of coffee and... Uh, but, you know, like, subscribe, share. Uh, I'm going to wrap the video up with my you know, last little point here. But, um, you know, tell me what you think. Tell me if I got this stuff wrong, if you know better than me, or um, what else is interesting. And I'll try to look into that stuff and do another video. All right, so we're literally reshaping and shaping the world we're in by observing it. And what you and I or even other animals choose to observe or look at, um, the choices, you know, and then the observations that follow from our choices actually have a really profound effect on the world to follow. So how you look at the world, when you look, what your attitude is, perhaps this is how I take it even a little step further because 
these things bouncing around in our brains are these quantum things as well. Everything is happening on a quantum level as well. So every energy that you throw at yourself, happy and sad feel different, and they also look different in the brain when you look under a microscope. So science is just catching up to these kind of stuff. I think if you go forward 100 years, you're going to see that um, stuff like the law of attraction and positive thinking is not this esoteric um, thing. Um, it feeds into this idea of collective unconscious and uh, you know understanding the real fundamental way nature set up. So the last piece of this is basically uh, we have to admit or basically give some credence to the the idea that that there's parallel universes and that there's this thing called the multiverse. Talk about this in other videos. Some of the people I uh, interact with online are interested in this, so I keep bringing it up, and I think I bring it, I try to present it from a different way. And I'm watching different videos. Um, you know, I want to expose you guys to what I'm interested in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but you know, the notion of a parallel universe or a multiverse has to be almost the conclusion based on if we have all these different realities that it could exist, and they're all just determined based on how we look and what we look, and you know, what, how we're measuring things. It has to be true that we could have, unless we have what's called determinism, that's a time, you know, topic for another video, but where we could have no choice, assuming we have free will, we could have looked or observed at any time. So things are only where they are, partially due to us and due to our actions and observations. Hopefully I didn't blow you guys' mind too much. Maybe I bored you. Maybe I lost you. Um, but, you know, comments and feedback greatly appreciated. I'm going to... Uh, Link the original BBC video in the comments, um, and uh, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace out.